Have you ever imagined mixing cement with car shampoo and creating something that most people have never heard of? The most curious thing is that this secret has always been right before our eyes, being used indirectly in construction, but almost no one notices. Today I'm going to show you the beginning of this process, step by step, in a simple and practical way. To begin, separate exactly 100 milliliters of car shampoo and place it in a clean container. This detail is crucial because the correct proportion is what determines whether the result will be ordinary or surprising. The proportions of this mixture are not random. Each component has a specific function in the final result. Here I will use 5 kilograms of cement, half a kilogram of construction plaster, and approximately 30 grams of chopped fiberglass. The amount of fiber is extremely important. That's why I'm going to use a precision scale, because here, error simply cannot happen. An excess of fiber can compromise the mixture, and a lack of it can reduce the final performance. It is precisely this attention to detail that differentiates a common test from a serious experiment. To complement this idea, I'm going to use a mortar mixer and also four nylon cable ties. The cable ties will be attached two on each side at specific points on the mixer. This adaptation is completely homemade but extremely efficient, and at the right time you will understand exactly its function. Leave a comment below telling me where you're watching from. Write your city and country. It's fascinating to see how far this content can reach, to discover who's part of this huge community, and it inspires me to produce videos that are increasingly tailored for you, wherever you are in the world. After that, simply attach the mixer to the drill chuck and wait for the right moment to put it into action. It's time to prepare the first stage of this experiment. I'll start by pouring three liters of water into a clean basin. While still using the water, I add 50 milliliters of common plasticizing additive. Next, five kilograms of cement are added. The function of the additive is to improve workability, making the mixture more malleable, homogeneous, and easy to control. Now the drill with the mixer comes into play. This process is essential to eliminate air bubbles, lumps, and any dry dust that may remain at the bottom of the bowl. The mixing is quick, about three minutes is enough to reach the ideal consistency. The mixing process is quick. About three minutes is enough to reach the ideal consistency. Once the mixture is homogeneous, I add 30 grams of chopped fiberglass and do another mixing cycle, ensuring even distribution of the fibers. Now it's time to prepare the target for this experiment. Here I have two plastic molds, and in this case I'm going to apply used motor oil to the entire inner surface of each one. This procedure has a very clear function, to facilitate demolding after the concrete reaches its initial setting point. The use of used motor oil as a release agent is very common in construction, especially in simpler homemade methods. It's a cheap, easy to apply, and extremely efficient solution especially when working with concrete and plastic molds. But there are other alternatives to facilitate demolding. It's possible to use release agents specifically for concrete or even common liquid detergent. The most important thing is not the method itself, but rather obtaining a good final result with easy demolding and without damaging the piece. Now I'm going to separate a generous amount of this mixture, remembering that here we only have cement and fiberglass without the addition of other elements. 
This sample will be kept for direct comparison after curing, serving as a reference for the traditional material. At the end of this video, you will be surprised by the real difference in results between the mixtures. In addition, I will prepare two different types of mixtures, each with the addition of different elements, precisely to show how each component interferes with the final performance. Before producing the main ingredient, I will measure the height of the already prepared concrete, just the mixture of cement and fiberglass, using a tape measure. This measurement serves to create a precise volume reference, allowing me to later compare the difference generated with the addition of the other elements. Now we come to the main part of this experiment. I will use a 30 liter drum, where I add one liter of clean water and then 100 milliliters of car shampoo. At this point, the drill comes into action again. The mixer, fitted with nylon clamps, will be responsible for producing the most important ingredient, the foam. This process is extremely fast. In less than one minute, it's possible to generate up to 30 liters of foam. Throughout the video, you will understand the true function of this foam and how it completely transforms the behavior and volume of the mixture. Now is the time to incorporate the 30 liters of foam into the mixture. Next, I repeat the same procedure as before, using the mixer, but now with an important detail. The presence of the foam completely changes the behavior of the mixture. During mixing, you may notice that the consistency begins to change. Mix well until the foam is fully incorporated and disappears visually. From here on, the process requires speed and precision. It's time to add the construction plaster. After adding the ingredients, it is essential to mix immediately until a homogeneous mass is obtained before the plaster begins to set. With the mixture ready, I'll measure the volume again. Note that there has been a significant increase, reaching approximately half the initial volume. Now I will perform the final test of this experiment, using two different methods. The first form contains the initial mixture, prepared at the beginning of the process, composed only of cement and fiberglass, which was intentionally separated as a reference. In the second method, I will apply exactly the same volume, but with the complete mixture containing cement, fiberglass, foam, and construction plaster. This direct comparison is essential to understand the real differences between the two compositions. It is important to remember the correct mixing sequence. Water, plasticizing additive, cement, optional, chopped fiberglass, foam, and, always lastly, the construction plaster. The minimum curing time for demolding is at least 36 hours. The role of the plaster here is simple and strategic to accelerate the initial setting, reducing the waiting time without compromising the structure. If you're not already subscribed, now's the time. Subscribe now and stay up to date with all the news and exclusive tips. This way you won't miss any new videos and you'll also support the channel so we can bring you even more quality content. Click the subscribe button and become part of this community. After the curing time, it's time to perform the tests. The first test will be with the hollow block. Here I will evaluate the final weight of the piece and analyze how much, in percentage, it was possible to reduce using this technique. For comparison, this same block, if produced with conventional concrete, would have an average weight of about 8 kilograms.
Note that with this technique, it was possible to reduce the weight by more than 50%. That's a real feat. Now, it's worth thinking about the future. How many applications can arise from this idea? Weight reduction, material savings, ease of transport, all of this opens up new possibilities for construction. Now it's time to present the comparative tests between two different mixtures. As a reminder, one of the pieces was produced only with cement and fiberglass. The other contains cement, fiberglass, foam, and construction plaster. After unmolding, it was time for the real performance test of each one. The first test is the water flotation test. As you can see here, in a basin of water, the block containing foam and plaster does not sink. This happens due to the internal structure created by the foam, which incorporates air into the mixture and drastically reduces the density of the material. Given this result, the question remains, what else can we create and take advantage of with this technique? Leave your suggestions in the comments. And if you liked this experiment, share it with friends and family. Thank you.